Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane. This video is part of my controller collection series, and today we're going to be talking all about the Dreamcast. Welcome back, guys. I'm so excited to have you guys back here, and I just I have to say, when I was collecting for the Dreamcast, tons of controllers that came out. Now, I didn't get all of them. I didn't get a lot of the Mad Cat series. I didn't get a lot of various other types and stuff, but I got a lot of Dreamcast and I'm so happy to be able to share these with you and just let you take a good close look at them and uh, understand exactly how these things work and you know what to expect from them and stuff like that. Anything from the maracas to the light guns, the arcade stick, the mouse and keyboard, the twin stick adapter, uh, the light guns, you know, you, you name it, you know, I'm probably had it. The one one that I'm missing is the fishing control. And it's because back then I was not into interested in any kind of fishing game in any way, shape, or form. But I do have a lot of Dreamcast control. And in most cases, I have four of them. Uh, again, glad to have you guys here. And here are the controls. All right, next up we have the Dreamcast controller. Um, it has you know, your basic membrane stuff. Uh, the analog stick is actually very interesting. If you take one of these apart, it does not work mechanically. It, it has, uh, and when I say that, it doesn't contact anything. None of this connects to a circuit board. It actually just kind of plugs into the circuit board, but there is no electronic connection. It's all this weird magnet and uh, there are sensors that detect how far the magnet is away. And then there's the two analog controllers, and then there's this, that the, the you know, a fairly decent uh, controller cable length. Um, but I still bought extenders just because that's the way I was back then, is I always bought extenders. And the cable actually can plug into here and have it come through the front to try to get it out of your way. And there's the VMU slot right there, and then, you know, one for either another VMU and or Rumble Pack as well. Uh, these were actually really good controllers. They fit really well in my hand. Now, they feel a little bit small now that I'm older. But, um, you know, I, I got this thing when I was in college. And I actually have four of them in very good condition. Uh, I loved the Dreamcast. I was a big supporter. And I'm kind of sad that it's gone. All right, now we have the Dreamcast arcade stick. This is actually not made by Sega. It's made by a different company. It's uh, made by, if you can see that, uh, HTech. And um, it's actually licensed by Sega, but it has a VMU slot, a fairly long cord with a basic Dreamcast controller uh, hookup. Uh, very clicky. Um, you know, and then these are not so clicky, but they feel really good in the window for the EMU in the start. So this is a really good, it's very heavy. It's got some really good feet on it. Um, I have four of these. I love them. A lot of people have actually gone to modifying these to, um, to what effect of, of like just being able to have a nice controller. Honestly, I think you should just stop modifying these and, and build them on your own. We have the mouse and keyboard. Uh, this is actually an older mouse with a roller ball in the bottom. You actually have to open this up and clean it as there's the rollers on the inside and you have to clean the ball as well. Um, but it's, uh, it's an older style mouse and it's kind of interesting that uh, they actually chose this. Although back then the, uh, the mice were a little bit on the expensive side. And I cannot seem to get this back together. Um, so, uh, shoot. What is it? Is it this way? Oh, I'll figure that out later. So, here's the keyboard. Um, now, the reason that I have... I mean, it, it's 
The mouse has the, the basic Dreamcast hookup, and so does the keyboard. The reason I have it in this plastic bag is because if you see right there, if you wrap the cord around and everything, uh, this cord right here actually causes some damage and um, you know will continue to damage because it's leaking a particular gas that weakens plastic but it's just a basic keyboard um it does have its own like dreamcast logo right there and it's actually a lot of fun to have this uh, i mainly bought this for pso but then i started playing uh games like uh quake and stuff like that where you could you know just basically use wsad and then use the mouse as well it's a really good device up we have my Dreamcast light guns. I actually bought two different brands because the second one was not sold in the U.S. Uh, first is this Interact one right here. It's got a spot for a VMU or a rumble pack. Um, it has various features, um, specifically like um, you know a re reload and then a set. Um, it has various functions right here if you can see um, whatever. So. And then the start and then the B on the other side there's a start and a B as well uh, this part right here actually lights up um, especially when you pull the trigger and then it has the d-pad as well this is actually a fairly comfortable gun um, despite appearances and um, a good alternative I, I do wish that the Dreamcast gun had actually come out in the US unfortunately you cannot even use the Japanese Dreamcast gun next up we're gonna have uh, this guy right here and it's the pelican one and this one looks ugly as could be but this gun is really comfortable in the hands and you can actually even hold like this and do that or um you know like there's reload right there and stuff and then there's a start and multifunction as well this one also has a vmu slot they put the d-pad back here along with the start and b and then there's um uh, jolt where it's just basically like a rumble and there's a B right there and another fairly long cord with a basic Dreamcast hookup. Next up I've got this little adapter. Um, it is the Total Control 3. Let me get that out of the glare and you know it it takes Sega Saturn games and a VMU and you know outport, outputs them to the Dreamcast and you can actually use a controller or a twin stick and like i said it it just does dreamcast now the reason that i really bought this this device right here is because i want to be able to use this guy in the um on the on the dreamcast um, this is the sega twin stick it is a saturn controller um, it's very clicky. Almost all the buttons are clicky except for the top ones are membrane. And then it has a start somewhere around here. Oh, yep, here it is. Um, we have a start button right here. It's a fairly hefty stick. Uh, there's a major problem with it though is that these uh, rubber feet actually start to rot and they get really hard. Well, they, they go soft and they finally get really hard and they just start sticking to anything and everything but what you do is you just take this guy and this guy and then you take it and come on focus hey focus focus there you take it and make sure that it's set to twin stick and then you take this and you plug it in and now you can play this on the Dreamcast. Next up, we have the Samba de Amigo Maracas. These things are huge. They are quite a bit to set up, but they are the only way you should play Samba de Amigo. Comes with these maracas that have a shake. They also have a button. Um, the other one has a button as well. And then they connect to a foot pad with this connector that looks like an S video connector. If I can get that to focus a little bit, yeah. And then I believe it uses some sort of sonic detection to detect how far away from the pad it is. Um, there is a mat that you sit on. I'll fold that out in a second. But this is the Dreamcast 
pad, and there's one for each side, you know, and it velcros down and stuff. And it's your basic Dreamcast controller connection. And here is the pad that I will unfold. And it says Samba de Amigo as well. And it has a place for your feet. And it has two little ver Velcro areas for the bar, sensor bar to attach to. But this is a wonderful game. Uh, I wish I could get my hands on a second controller. But that's probably going to be impossible for me. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.